is June 21st, two days after the day. Roll call, please. Calling the roll, Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Greenspan? Mr. Greenspan is absent. Mr. Germana? Here. Mr. Harrison? Here. Ms. Conwell? Ms. Conwell is absent. There is a quorum. Also, like the record to reflect that Councilman Miller is in attendance. As always, welcome, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, do we have any public comment? I know, Mr. Chair, no one has signed That's in. That's good. In your uh, packets, we have the minutes of March 22nd. If they're in order, I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Thank you. Eddie, before we start, do I uh, have any information regarding tomorrow, the parade, and um, what we're going to do as far as time for the employees? Right now, I mean, tentatively, the executive is looking at um, an extended uh, lunch period in the, in the range of 10.30 to 2.30, um, still uh, waiting on details both from the Cavaliers, uh, which the executive has calls into, as well as uh, the city of Cleveland. So uh, by the end of the day, uh, today, uh, there will be uh, messages obviously going out to all the employees uh, for the exact set schedule. But that is a sort of a tentative of what the executive is looking at. But by the end of the day, there will be a firm uh, commitment as to the time. Okay, great. Just as long as they understand by the end of the day, they'll know what's going on, we'll know what's going on. And uh, an inconvenience I think we're all willing to put up with. Absolutely. Anybody here, were you present at the 64 championship game? Anybody? Well, I was <laughs> at eight years old, <laughs> and I'm still trying to figure out. I'm still in like a haze. I, I don't know how to act. I don't know how to feel. People are smiling downtown. It's uh, the sun's the sun's a little brighter. The smiles are a little bigger, and and uh, it's it really is quite something. I never thought that this would happen. My son got me nothing for Father's Day, and after the game, he said that's what he got me. So that's uh, so I accepted that Gl gladly. Janine. Resolution number 2016-0111, authorizing a contract with Taser International Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $724,621.43 for Taser body cameras for the period 7-1-2016 through 6-30-2021. Mr. Bowen. Chairman to Council, uh, Frank Bowen, Chief Community Safety Officer. Uh, Appreciate you uh, uh, bringing this onto the agenda sure. today. Uh, we, we feel it's a priority to have some of these cameras up and running for the RNC, and then clearly after that. Uh, today, the presentation is going to be made by Captain Don Jerome, Donna Cleal from the Sheriff's Office, and then we have uh, Marvin from Texas and Jeff from Maryland, the actual people that are uh, going to be uh, putting the cameras on. So testing's already started, uh, and, and uh, it, with Council's approval and, and uh, next week's vote. Uh, hopefully we'll be up and running. So uh, if you will, I'll, I'll bring up Captain Jerome and Donna Cleal. Okay. And that's how many cameras? This is... Uh, uh, I believe it's 150. 150? Okay. Right. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon, Council. Afternoon. I'm glad you're in a good mood today. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who could not be in a good mood today? <laughs> Now, uh, uh, tomorrow, I don't know how you guys are going to feel. So. Uh, well, it won't be busier than Sunday, let's <laughs> yeah, put it so that way. Get it, the it, smiles out of the way. I think you're going to be busy it, tomorrow. It, well, not as much as Sunday again. So good busy. We, uh, yeah, it's a good busy. Um, again, Cam Jones, Sheriff's Department. Um, today, we're uh, here to request approval to enter a contract with Taser International, uh, purchasing 150 Axon body cameras. Um, these cameras would be deployed for our entire department. Um, so far, we've been pre-planning with Taser uh, and rolling out um, 50 cameras uh, arriving uh, July 6th or 7th and rolling out about 30 cameras on our deputies for the uh, RNC. Uh, we've tested other companies uh, to include iView, or I'm sorry, VView and the i3. Um, we've tested all of them with our deputies in the field and uh, Exxon uh, Taser. Uh, was the uh, preferred choice of amongst the three. 
Could you tell us a little bit how those work? You put them on for an eight hour shift and they record eight hours or? Sure. Um, and we brought a uh, couple of reps from Taser to, to, to help out with the, uh, if we need a demonstration or anything as well. Um, so basically it's a body camera. They do go on you, um, either your outer vest or, or your uniform or however you want. Um, basically you hit a button when you want to record it. Uh, it's constantly, uh, I want to say constant recording, but uh, once you hit that button, it will go back 30 seconds, which is called a pre-incident buffer mode, mode um, pre-incident event. So uh, basically just pushing a button, you're recording anything, um, uh, you know, any interaction with the public, uh, traffic stops, uh, anything like that. Um, it'll keep recording until you actually turn it off. Okay. Um, most departments, including you know, our policies when it comes out, it's not constantly going to be on. Uh, the lifespan of the battery is going to be 12 hours, uh, but um, we don't need uh, video of, you know, if nothing's happening. So right. um, basically the average, I believe, for an eight-hour shift is maybe uh, one or two hours of recording. Uh, so uh, once you're done recording for the day, we're going to have uh, you come back to the office, uh, you put it in a dock, docking station, and all that information, the videos, uh, uploaded to what we call the uh, the cloud. And like I said, uh, Jeff here from Taser can explain a little bit more of that. Is there any procedure in place to maintain the recorded information, like a third that, day? That all be that all be before we we get them in our policies and procedures. Okay. Sir, you want to just elaborate on yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. Good afternoon, council members, and uh, congratulations. Um, so I think the big thing that uh, that separates us from some of the other competitors in the space is it's a fully integrated capture to courtroom solution. So we integrate hardware, software, and then obviously the stakeholders involved. Uh, the county prosecutor's office is actually um, on our platform, which is evidence.com, uh, as well as a number of other uh, neighboring jurisdictions, Cleveland PD and Lakewood, uh, to name a couple. Um, as far as operation of the cameras, the officers would turn them on at the start of a shift and they go into a buffer mode. So it's 30 second loop that's constantly recycling itself. Once they approach an individual where they wanna actually activate the camera, they would double tap it. So it's a very quick process to activate the cameras. And then it's gonna start recording. To notify the officers that it's recording, there's gonna be an audible tone, as well as haptic feedback, a number of audio and uh, uh, visual lights to allow the officers to know that the cameras are on. To deactivate the cameras, they would hold it down for about three, five seconds and it would turn the cameras off. Um, as Captain alluded to, at the end of a shift, workflow efficiencies, the officers would dock the cameras and walk away. Firmware would update on the cameras, very similar to like your iOS devices or your Android devices on your cell phones. The video would upload and the cameras would recharge. Um, so again, the, the overwhelming theme here is obviously workflow efficiencies and, and trying to do more with less. Okay. Questions? Mr. Germano. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is this the same taser company that makes the tasers that shoots the... Yes, sir. That's correct. Yes, sir. I'm just wondering, you know, I gave a talk last week and I was talking about the RNC where these yes. taser cameras are going to be used and someone asked that question of me and I, I thought, well, it's perfect if they're going to taser somebody <laughs> It'd be nice to have a recording uh, of that. So, thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Anything? Anything else? Anyone? And uh, finances. Where's our money coming from? Um, as for the finances, this is all. This spans five. This will span three biennial budgets, five years. So it's, uh, it's this year, the 16, 17, the 18, 19, and the 2021 20, budget. Now, of the 742,000, we already have 400. The prosecutor's office has committed 200,000 to us, uh, of which they've given us the first 100,000 from discretionary funds. They're going to issue the second check uh, by the end of this year for the second 100,000. We have 100,000 right now of JAG funds, and we will have, and we uh, we know we have that's of the FY15 JAG funds, and we have another 100,000 of FY16 JAG. Fund. So we have 400,000 toward the 742. 
this I can tell you, we've had, we have applied for several body camera grants of which we were denied. We called the Department of Justice, wanted to find out why the denial, and they said they do not like to fund startup projects. They like to fund sustainment. So we would have a much better chance of getting grant funding for this project once we get it up and running. Now that's not a guarantee, but it, it is something we, you know, we'll, we're going to continue to go after. We do know that every year, for the most part, we get 100000 in JAG funding. So if we have to continue to use JAG funding, we can do that. We also know we, you know, I can piecemeal something together, maybe some discretionary funds, maybe some JAG funding, maybe some you know, general fund money if we have something extra in the general fund. But of the 742, we know right now we have 400000 We won't even need funds till 2019 for this project. And by then, we'll have, of course, the 150 deployed. By then, we'll actually have the second set because this project calls for replacements every go ahead yeah I mean, again one of the nice things about the program too it doesn't mitigate risk from a hardware and software perspective so over the course of five years um, it would actually include three cameras for every officer that's being deployed so another camera would come at year two and a half and another camera would come at year five so again you're kind of protecting yourself from upgrades and hardware and then software all of the upgraded software is included again very similar to like your ios device when you update your phone um, so that's all included within the package and another thing as far as uh, risk assessment within the contract non-appropriations is built in so again if we ever got to that point where budgets were removed uh, there is um, an out, out clause there that allows the city to, to get out of the contract. You still own all of the data, and work, we'll work with you on that migration plan. Okay. Uh, questions? Uh, Mr. Miller. Mr. Chairman, uh, is it going to be policy that all interaction with the public is going to be recorded? Uh, yes, sir, especially if there's any um, incidents. Uh, um, warrant service, um, traffic stops. Um, in our policy, we'll, if someone just comes up and asks a question to you, um, then no, they probably won't be turning on their, their cameras for that. But if the follow-up question, if there's some interaction that, um, that we feel we need to record that, and that's where the buffering comes in, uh, as soon as you hit that button, it, it would pre-record the 30 seconds of the interaction you had with that person. Uh, so that's, that's all body cameras do not offer that. Uh, so that was another reason why uh, we'd like to go on with the Taser International. Okay. And uh, one further question. If, if, uh, if, if an officer was in a car and, and, uh, and, uh, and started a chase, w would the camera be turned on at that time or not until they get to the scene? They would turn it on at that time, sir. Okay. Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just quickly, you mentioned that the footage will be downloaded to a cloud. Is there an expiration period once that information, that, you know, sometimes clouds only have a certain amount of space? And then at that point, is it archived or is it just deleted or what happens? But that's pretty much our policy of how, how long we want to keep that video. That will be in our policies. Um, and with the help of Taser, um, we'll go over those before we... We deploy them, say, um, I think a year, as most people keep uh, some put it. Put it. it. It all depends on what your policy is as far as, like, complaints and stuff that may come in. Um, so we'll go over that before we deploy these. Thank you. Okay. Anything further? Uh, and and if, if we could just elaborate, I know um, uh, regionalism and uh, transparency are two, two uh, main points the county stresses, and this would, uh, these tasers are national, they would cover both. Uh, transparency would be the body cameras itself. I think law enforcement, all law enforcement is going towards body cameras. Um, and the regionalism, like we discussed, um, Lakewood has uh, has this. Uh, the prosecutor's office has evidence.com as well as the city of Cleveland. And I think Jeff can expand on that a little bit more as far as uh, the evidence.com aspect of it and sharing uh, data with other agencies. Yeah, so evidence.com, uh, there's multiple pieces to the platform. Storage is one aspect. Um, it is unlimited storage, uh, and you can keep it indefinitely, and it is actually tied to automated retention schedules. So again, the goal here is to automate as much of this as possible. Um, so depending on whatever the retention periods are for different categories, we'll actually tie it to the back end, um, and then Catherine will be notified, you know, depending on which videos are, if, if they're queued up for deletion um, or just removal based off the retention periods. 
As far as sharing, um, everything is shared uh, via chain of custody and audit trail. So all tracking is attached to every video. Um, they're all SHA-1 encrypted, so we, we could get into that if, if there's a need for that. Um, but everything's secured, everything's tracked within the platform. There's built-in functionality such as redaction, um, as well as automated categories and things along those lines. So it's a full capture to courtroom solution. Okay. Anything further? Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, We want to move this uh, forward, correct, Mr. Bova? Chairman, that's, that's correct. Uh, we'd like to move forward on uh, second, uh, reading. third reading, right, for vote on the next council meeting. Second, second, second reading. That's correct. So I'll accept a, a motion for resolution 2016-0111. If there's no further discussion for second reading. Move suspension. for second reading suspension. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Now, regarding uh, miscellaneous business, uh, and, and I know there's not much information out there. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's. Uh, I know it's probably more frustrating for you than mm -hmm. it is us, but it, it is funny to me that you, you go out in public and people want to know and I don't know if they want to know to avoid Cleveland or to come down and partake in what's going to be happening and some of the things that they read. I don't know what you can share, but whatever information you might have, um, I think would be helpful to us when we're out in the public and uh, anyone watching, obviously, um, could digest whatever you have to say right now. And if you do anticipate a time in the near future that, that you're going to have information we can certainly get together at that time, but I'm I'm guessing at that point it'll be in the paper and uh, there won't be much of a necessity for us to do that. So whatever you have. Okay. Uh, uh, first, first of all, thank you. Um, I just want to say, um, uh, myself and Sheriff Pinckney have been meeting for the last year with the Executive Steering Committee, uh, which is led by the uh, Secret Service and uh, the City of Cleveland, clearly, and and several other partners from uh, federal, state, and local. Uh, we are very confident in, in our plan. Uh, you know, we're prepared as, as prepared as we can be. Uh, we've had several tabletop exercises, several training periods, regardless of what you've heard. Uh, uh, most of our officers have been trained on several occasions. Uh, quietly, we're doing it. Uh, and, and the hardened zone, the hardened zone around the queue uh, has not officially been established. Uh, uh, there's always assessments done on uh, threat assessments done throughout the country to see uh, potential problems. Uh, so that's all that analysis is being done as we speak. Uh, there's a secure area and a hardened area, and and, and uh, you know I I, I I our citizens and the council and, and anybody else can probably figure out a little bit uh, where the hardened zones are going to be. Uh, that that'll be pretty restrictive to get in and out of, uh, but. I just wanted to assure uh, council uh, that the sheriff's department, uh, led by Sheriff Pinckney, and, and the rest of the team, uh, are, are, we're prepared as we're going to be. Uh, we've ran through uh, many, many, many scenarios, uh, and uh, I think we're ready for anything that happens. We're anticipating, uh, you know, clearly we're anticipating protesters, which they have the right to protest, uh, and we're going to honor that right. Uh, clearly, if it gets violent, we're, we're not going to allow that. Uh, so hopefully it won't. Uh, you can yell and, and yell and scream at uh, your adversaries all day. We'll allow that. Uh, but uh, we're, we're, we've practiced on how we're going to handle each situation. So I, I know that's sort of a reader digest version. But mm -hmm. and I know what really everybody wants to know is the hardened zones. But sure. we're not going to go public with that. You know, clearly till probably about two weeks, uh, maybe three weeks uh, before the convention. So first week of July. So we anticipate our cameras will be here and functional. And, and That's correct. Uh, 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 well, we will have five mobile cameras, uh, which have four cameras on each one, so that's 20 cameras. They'll be stationed throughout Cuyahoga County. Cleveland has a robust camera system downtown. Uh, we're going to be going to different areas uh, uh, as we work with public safety and justice services to determine, and police chiefs and fire chiefs, to see who would be in the most need or where there may be uh, pockets of people that may be 24-hour visual put on them. How are we going to handle the jail situation? Uh, the, the jail situation, uh, 
Director Ken Mills and Sheriff Pinckney have come up with a plan. Uh, there's going to be 200 beds available during the uh, RNC at the uh, juvenile, uh, the uh, Justice Center. Uh, we've partnered with uh, Bedford Heights to open up their jail for that week, and uh, we're going to be moving 200 of our, of our healthy inmates out to there for the week. So that plan's already in place. Okay. Any other questions? So you're going to take 200 from downtown and move them out there? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. I know there was a, a miscommunication. Uh, there was a rumor going around that we're going to bring everybody out there, but we're not. We're bringing our people out there and using the Justice Center down here. It's more convenient. Because I, I know the courts uh, and everyone has been working with us. You know, uh, uh, minor misdemeanors, we're going to get in and get out. They're not even going to be there for an hour. So, Are they going to have, if you know, courts for 24 hours? I'm, I'm, I don't want to speak for the courts, but I'm pretty sure that the system is in place for 24 hours. Okay. Anyone? For Mr. Miller? What's your sense as to how uh, how doable or practical it is for uh, for ordinary business to be conducted in the downtown area during the convention? Is is that going to be able to happen, or, or are things going to be pretty well shut down? You know, uh, Councilman, um, Chairman, and Councilman Miller, I, I believe that you can still conduct business, but are there going to be? Uh, Different hurdles you have to jump over, maybe a little more restrictive to get to your business that week. Yes, but uh, actual operating uh, during the actual hours, because you know, you really the convention, the majority of it happens after four o'clock when when the delegates all get downtown and stuff. So, uh, you know, during the day, I think I think we can get business as usual, uh, but but it'll be, you know, in, in some areas, depending on the, if you're in the hard zone or not, you may have a little difficult getting there, but you should be able to perform your duties. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, a little off topic. Has, has the Sheriff's Department been notified about tomorrow at all? Have we? We always assist. We have an MOU with Cleveland, so yeah, we are assisting. Uh, Captain Jerome probably would know more, uh, uh, you know, internally, but I know that we're, our, our, our SWAT team, our, our other teams that assist during major events like this. My, my concern is, and I think the administration's concern is, is we're 22 hours away and we really don't even know the route. Is anybody even? Yeah, the route's out. Yeah, the route's, the route's, route's out. made public. That's correct. Well, it's uh, uh, and the, the beginning of it's a little bit confusing, but it's going to start at the queue. Right. It's going to come down East 6, a little bit of East 6 that's over here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to go around uh, the back end, uh, up Huron to Ontario, go south on Ontario, down Carnegie, and then straight down 9th Street. So you're in a little confusing. Right here. That's, 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 <laughs> do that again? It's confusing at the beginning, but this it's going to circle around the queue. The it's going to circle around the queue. I'm really simplifying okay, it, but yeah. it's circle around the queue, come down Carnegie and then down 9th Street. Okay. That's correct. This only happens once every 52 years, so yeah, they're going to make it as long as they can. It's like the locust kind of, you know, it's, uh, let's hope it's not that long. I don't know if Cap has anything else to add. So. Just yet, yeah, the city uh, has reached out to us. We will be assisting uh, approximately 40, 50 uh, deputies to uh, okay. work the event tomorrow. Okay, I guess we'll have those cameras up then too, huh? The cameras the, are never the, turned off the, Cleveland, so. the portable or whatever. Our are portals those? won't. No. No, our our portals will be here the first week of July. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, question, Mr. Miller. Getting back to your to the convention, can you share to what extent the uh, the hardening of everything, the difficulties of travel, the uh, restrictions, and so on. To what extent is this going to be just a feature for for the four days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday that the convention meets, or or to what extent do you think some of these features will extend either uh, either prior to the opening day or or beyond the closing day? Councilman Miller, I believe that the uh, the actual security plan is, will be a couple days before the, the actual four days. Everything like that has not been finalized, but I'm, I'm confident that uh, we'll, we'll start securing the area before the before the convention. And it's a, that's a weekend, so that, that's good. Uh. Now, the Friday before the convention, things should still be pretty normal, would you think? 
don't hold me to it. I, I, I don't have an answer for that. I, I, uh, we haven't finalized that yet. Okay. When uh, the other officers that are coming in, will they be in like a week early or? Um, they're coming in uh, yeah, that week before, but not the week before. So it'll probably like the Thursday and Friday, and they'll start showing up. Okay. You mean for the out-of-state, correct? Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you. We have other public comment? No, Mr. Chair, no one is signed in. Anything further, gentlemen? Thank you.